just for the record, I'm going to have you say your name for me and spell it. Michael Stauffer, S-T-A-U-F-F-E-R. And I guess just in your own words, tell me, what's your background? Well, I, I'm 28 years in law enforcement. I started in New York City, New York City Police Department. Uh, I worked in patrol there. I moved on to, uh, I was one of the first canine officers in New York City PD. Uh, from there, I, I went to the narcotics division. After that, I moved out here to the Valley. I got here in 1991. Uh, and work for Scottsdale. I've been there ever since, so 20 years with Scottsdale. Well, great, and um, I guess let's get right into it. You're running for Maricopa County Sheriff. Yes. Why do you think you can beat Sheriff Joe Arpaio? Well, the time has come for the people of Maricopa County to have a professional law enforcement agency as their county agency. My qualifications speak for themselves. Uh, I've been in a leadership position for quite some time now, and I understand how to lead people into being professional and holding them to high standards. And that's why I can beat uh, the current sheriff, because he is not holding people to their highest standards. I guess that leads to the question, why run now? I, you filed a year ago. What led you to that decision? Is it just you're watching what's happening and you're not pleased with it? I guess just tell me, why is now the time? Well, I've been in this profession, like I said, for 28 years. Uh, I, I can't see doing anything else. Uh, I'm very proud of this profession. Uh, what I've seen this sheriff doing over the last 17, 18 years that he's been in, in office is uh, deplorable. It's appalling to me. Uh, two years ago, uh, I finally had enough, and I, dis and I made a decision that I wanted to run and give the people a choice of a professional law enforcement leader as opposed to what they have now. You say a professional law enforcement leader. Do you think yes. what's happening in the sheriff's office right now is unprofessional? Yes, it, it is extremely unprofessional. The, the sheriff is not holding his people to very high standards. Uh, he either doesn't know what's going on, like he claims, or he's complicit in what's going on. Uh, his top two men have been fired uh, after uh, an investigation. Uh, the, the sheriff before that refused to fire them, uh, even knowing that s stuff was going on that, that was very bad, very detrimental to law enforcement here. So it, that's why it, it need, you need a leader here in Maricopa County who can hold people to their high, the highest standards. So one of the things I think a lot of people would be interested in knowing is everybody has an idea, perhaps, of what the sheriff stands for. He goes on TV and says it all the time. What's your platform? What's your vision for Maricopa County and the sheriff's office? My, my vision for, for Maricopa County is to go out and do real law enforcement that's effective and gets results. In that process, uh, cleaning up the the outstanding warrants that are out there. Uh, currently, there are 40,000, approximately, felony warrants. Uh, in that process, we will be arresting real bad guys that need to be off the street. Uh, I also have a vision that we will be conducting real investigations that get real results and lead to real arrests, not just clearance by exception. I want real arrests. I want handcuffs on, on the bad guys. So again, you know, what's you talked about your vision. What's, what's your platform? What's your stance on immigration, for example? That's something a lot of people are going to want to know. Well, if somebody is committing a crime, they need to be arrested and put in jail and punished for that crime. But the focus needs to be on the people on Maricopa County. That's where it needs to be. In the process of arresting bad guys, we will be arresting, I'm sure, illegal immigrants. I'm sure that more than enough legal immigrants have outstanding warrants, so we will be arresting. We'll also be cooperating with the federal government, their, their agencies that are the ones that are responsible for deportation and arrest. So that's not currently happening. Uh, the police departments around Maricopa County are making arrests of illegal immigrants. The, the sheriff's office is not. Uh, the sheriff's office is actually making, uh, is stealing the stats from, from the police departments around, 
around the valley, as well as stealing the stats from uh, ICE and the Border Patrol. To say that they're not doing their job is, is really wrong. They are doing their job, but they are stymied by the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and their, their showmanship. When you say stealing stats, do you mean that they're actually using some of those numbers to say that they're doing all of that work? Yes. The sheriff is saying that he's arrested 30,000 illegal immigrants. That's not true. Those arrests were made by Phoenix PD, Scottsdale PD, Mesa PD. They were made by ICE. The sheriff, because all those arrests go through the jail, he appropriates those numbers. And that's why he tells you, well, I, I've arrested uh, 30,000 people. I'm not sure where he gets that number from, even. So one of the things in that answer is the, the sheriff's office has made it almost a, a priority or a policy to really go after, or go, go after illegal immigration. You're saying that if that comes up in the, in, the, in the process of normal police work, then you obviously investigate, handle those crimes, but is that going to be a priority for the office to go after the sweeps like he's doing if you were sheriff? I won't do the same kind of sweeps. Those sweeps are ineffective. They yield very few arre real arrests. What I will do is work with, the, work with ICE, work with Border Patrol, work with the other police departments as a resource and to, as part of a task force to do that. So it will be a priority. However, I won't compromise the law enforcement responsibilities within the contract cities, the rural areas, and the unincorporated areas that, that form the basic part of responsibility for MCSO. You've kind of referred to MCSO as an isolated agency. You work in another Valley Police Department. Yes. Do you feel there is enough working together between the Sheriff's Office and other agencies, or is that something that you feel needs to be improved? It needs to be improved, especially at the top, the, the upper levels. The, the front line levels work together, uh, basically because our, our jurisdictions overlap, uh, but the upper echelons do, do not work very well together. The, the sheriff is only interested in being in front of a camera. He's not interested in cooperating with other uh, police agencies or law enforcement agencies if they're going to get some kind of credit. He wants to be the one in front of the camera. That's why you see ICE and DPS making arrests without MCSO uh, with regards to immigration is because MCSO won't participate if, sheriff, if the sheriff doesn't get his, get his picture in the paper or on TV and get to take credit for it. I, you will not see me doing that. Uh, I prefer, I think our law enforcement officials should be behind the, more behind the scenes working together and promoting public safety. Does that isolation we're talking about, maybe that camera-hungry mentality, does that hurt public safety? It does, it, because all, all that's happening is a show. It's not, it's not getting people off the street. And as, you can, as some of the stories have been coming out regarding 400 uh, cases that have been uninvestigated or under-investigated, uh, especially the sex crimes cases with child victims, there were two de former deputies that have said we they were pulled off of cases for more politically showmanship uh, type things. So yes, it hurts public safety and it hurts victims. Victims aren't getting justice. Victims are not getting uh, their day in court because these investigations haven't gone through and the sheriff has neglected them. You're referring to our story, Christina Boomer, who's been working pretty hard at looking at the sex crimes that were ignored over the course of many years by the sheriff's office. What, what's your take on that? Is, is that hard for you to imagine? What, what's your... It's hard for me to imagine a law enforcement agency head tolerating uh, child victims being re-victimized or not having their day in court or not having their, their, uh, their, the perpetrator put in jail and, and punished for, for what he's doing. I, I'm surprised. Uh, by that, and that would not happen with me as, as the sheriff. All right, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk about the campaign. Now, you have no political experience, so what's your take on that? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Is that an advantage, disadvantage? I think it's a very good thing. Uh, people don't, law enforcement is not a political, it shouldn't be a politician's game. It should be a law enforcement leader. It's political by nature just because you, it's an elected position. However, 
the, the sheriff has to work with everybody, has to work with all the elected officials, has to work with frontline people, other agencies. So if, if you're a politician and you're just handing out endorsements and, and uh, making comments on, on laws and things like that that, have, that you don't have jurisdiction over, you're hurting your, your, your cause. And you, uh, so no political experience, I think, is an advantage because I have no ties to any of the corruption and the, um, the negligence that's been going on in MCSO. So you're running as a Republican. Yes. How are you going to run this campaign, raise money, just go through the process? What's kind of your theory, I guess you could say, as you go forward from here? Well, I want to show the people that I can, I can run a campaign just as well as I can run an office. I don't need a massive war chest uh, like the current sheriff seems to think he needs. I don't need that. All I need is a, uh, some donations so that I can get my message out. And it's the quality of the message that will win the day rather than the amount of money in, in, in the war chest. So that could be the, maybe the biggest challenge. I think a lot of people are going to say, Lieutenant Mike Stauffer, who? If, I, if, if someone were to say, ask, who is Lieutenant Mike Stauffer, what would be your answer? What would you tell a voter? What you stand for, who you are? I would tell them that I am a, well, I'm telling you, I, I am a, a dedicated law enforcement professional of 28 years uh, who believes in American law enforcement as a unique to the world uh, in that we are part of the community and that's how American law enforcement should operate as part of the community and I truly believe that. Only cooperation between the community, the elected officials and all the police agencies are we going to truly have uh, true public safety. Now based on your career had been in New York and in Scottsdale, if I were to go and pull your personnel files, what would that say about you as an officer? that I've done a, a great job over my 28 years. Um, I, I've had many assignments. Uh, like I told you, I've, I've been everything from patrol to canine. I, I've worked in narcotics. Uh, as a, as a uh, lieutenant, I've worked in the office of the chief. I supervised the internal affairs office, the uh, public information office, and the budget office. So I have a very varied career, a lot of experience that I can put to work as the sheriff. In terms of the campaign, some of the campaigns with the sheriff have gotten negative or ugly. He's been known to go after opponents, political opponents particularly. Does that worry you? What would you do if, if he tries to come after you politically? Well, I, I would tell him uh, we're, we're both adults and we shouldn't be throwing mud at each other and we shouldn't be trying to dig up uh, all that personal stuff. It should be a debate on the issues and how we're going to run the agency as the sheriff. Uh, if he comes after me personally, I will, I will defend myself, but I will take what, whatever he, I can take whatever he brings on. Okay. So now, without getting to too much into Scottsdale itself, professionally as a lieutenant, I'm sure there's been some crossover working with the sheriff's office. What's that yes. been like? Has it been as professional as it should be? At my level and at the front line level, the sergeant level, uh, yes, it, we, I've gotten along with uh, sheriff's officials and sheriff's deputies uh, just fine. Uh, we've operated together uh, on quite a few different things. Um, yeah, we've gotten along. Okay. Over the years, you know, we've heard a lot of things about what's happening inside the sheriff's office. Now we see this report released by the Pinal County Sheriff's Office. Have you read the report? I've read parts of it, yes. And based on what you've read, what do you think? I think it didn't go far enough. I think Sheriff Babu did not uh, go the extra mile and find out what the sheriff's responsibility was in all this. Uh, I find it hard to believe that the sheriff was deceived, especially after telling everybody for the last 17 years that he's in charge and nothing happens in his office without, without his knowledge. So I think Sheriff Babu kind of sidestep the, the main issue uh, and, and just worked on uh, uh, the former deputy chief, uh, deputy chief, chief deputy and, uh, and a commander 
and two commanders. Um, I would have liked to have seen a more thorough investigation. There was a lot in that report, you know, from sex crimes to retaliation, etc. Taking the job as the sheriff, if you're elected, there could be a lot that you have to take on. I guess if you're elected, where do you even begin? How do you even start that process of going through and evaluating a sheriff's office that's been accused of so much? Well, I would have to get in there and look at what the structure is uh, before I really comment on how I would restructure or how I would even begin. I'd have to get in there and, and see to what extent I, I have to clean house. And I know I'm going to have to, uh, especially at the upper levels. I'll have to have an office that people know that everybody that's working for me can be trusted with their welfare. Based on that, do you think the public trusts the sheriff's office or do you think there's a growing gap there? I see a growing lack of confidence from the public. Uh, as I've been campaigning and meeting people out in Maricopa County, I, I'm hearing that it's time for a change because the, the, the showmanship, the, the reality show theatrics that, that the sheriff currently uses are wearing very thin. The, waste, the wasteful spending is starting to become an issue. Uh, the, the tanks and the machine guns and the, the, the celebrity, dep uh, so celebrity deputies uh, have all distracted from the real issue of crime suppression, crime prevention, crime investigation, and smooth and efficient jail operations. So I, I'm thinking that the people have lost confidence in Sheriff Arpaio at this point. Maybe it's a kind of a funny question, but as a lieutenant, have you ever had a need for a tank or a machine gun? I, 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 I said as a lieutenant in the field, have you ever had a need for a, a, a tank or a machine gun? No, I've never, even in New York City, I didn't need a tank or a machine gun. <laughs> Has Arpaio's camp contacted you at all yet, or has there been any message between you and anybody in their campaign or their office? Well, the, the, uh, not directly. Uh, the sheriff has made some comments to some of my coworkers, uh, to, to one of my coworkers, as a matter of fact, we met on, a, on an elevator last year, and the comment was, uh, tell, tell that guy over there in Scottsdale that I've got $2.3 million in my, in my campaign fund. That was his message to me. What's your message back? Why do you need $2.3 million, isn't it a shame that a local sheriff's election needs the, the amount of funds that, that are taken to run senatorial campaigns? It, it seems kind of outlandish and wasteful. Last question for you, and I guess it's maybe the most important question, especially with everything that's going on. Why do you want this job? That, that's a great question. I want this job because the people of Maricopa County deserve a professional law enforcement leader. That's what they, they, they deserve. And I want to provide that to them. I feel I know that I can do this job. I have the qualifications necessary to take on this job. I am totally disconnected. I, I, I'm disconnected from any of the corruption that's involved there. And I can provide for the people of Maricopa County, a professional 21st century law enforcement agency. And that's why I want the job.